Welcome to another episode of The Modern Moron. You know, cards and letters have been flowing in uh, just thousands and thousands of postcards and letters saying, uh, no deaths, we don't want guests, we just want to hear you, we just want to hear you. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll do one more episode with just me. Congratulations, you get an out there episode with just yours truly. Not going to cover a whole lot of stuff here. Mainly, what I want to cover is Facebook and freedom of speech. Now, there's been a lot of controversy. I don't know if controversy is the right word, but people kind of are laying everything on Mark Zuckerberg. I'm not a big fan of Zuckerberg, but I'm on his side in this case. He says he doesn't want to censor people, especially politicians, not especially not especially anybody. He doesn't want to censor anyone on the platform of Facebook. And look at it this way. What if we decided you have to vet every piece of information before you allow uh, someone to advertise on Facebook? Facebook would not be a social platform anymore. It would just be a a vetting company. It would just be a fact-checking company. And I, I think that impedes too much on our freedom of speech. So I am on Mark Zuckerberg's side on this. Boo. Because if he has to do that with one politician, Trump or who, or Biden or who, whoever, Elizabeth Warren, now he's got to do it for everybody. And to what extent? It would never end. And I have an example for you. And I posted this on the Modern Morons Facebook page. There was a Facebook ad that came out recently. By recently, I mean a couple weeks ago. It was a Facebook ad that was put out by the Democratic Polling Center. From what very limited research skills I have, I don't see any Democratic Polling Center. Not as an entity in and of itself. I think it could be bull****. So when you search Democratic Polling Center, you don't get much. Let's go to Google. Democratic Polling Center. When you Google search Democratic Polling Center, you get real clear politics. You get headcount.org, you get the New York Times.com, and you get Vox.com. Now, Vox.com, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure that's way to the left. And I'm not really interested in what they have to say, even if they're way to the right. I'm also going to go to Firefox, where I am not signed in, as if that's going to make a difference because uh, the IP address is the IP address. So let's go to Google and let's go to Democratic Polling Center. Democrat, you get real clear politics again. Headcount.org, New York Times, NebraskaDemocrats.org. Why do I bring all this caca up? The reason is that I saw an ad, a Facebook ad, that said it was paid for by the Democratic Governors Association. So if you go to the Democratic Governors Association, the site is DemocraticGovernors.org. Okay. And in parentheses, it says DGA. If you go to DGA.org, guess what you get? You get the Directors Guild of America, okay? You want to read an article about Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese and their movie obsessions, director heroes, process, and violence as catharsis? Go to DGA.org. But if you think it's the Democratic Governors Association, then you just got punked, you got dorked, you got dipshitted is what you got. You've got to take a little bit of responsibility for what you're looking at and what you're searching. You can't expect Mark Zuckerberg or anyone to filter your news for you. Everyone has an angle, whether it's NBC or CNN or Fox News. Everyone has an angle. And I'm going to go back to the, mm, I'm not sure what the name of the episode was, the Wheeler Dealer from the Brady Bunch. Now, I know you know the Brady Bunch because you're over 50, preferably over 55. If you're under 50, turn off your phone and get off this podcast. Okay, it's the Wheeler Dealer from the Brady Bunch. Greg buys his first car and he ends up with a lemon. Do you remember that episode? I bet you do. Greg, are you trying to tell us that you you, you actually bought this? Uh... Classic, Dad. Right. Do you think it's safe for him to drive it? I, mean, I think it's the safest kind of car you could have, one that's not going to run. <laughs> Thank goodness for dad, Uh, Mike Brady. He told Greg the the great saying, caveat emptor. Remember that? Let the buyer beware. The same thing applies here, only it's actually more important because our freedom of speech is at stake here. 
Okay, politicians have been lying about each other before the independence of our country. It's been going on. If you don't believe me, watch Drunk History on Comedy Central. Okay, that's another one of the modern moron's favorite shows. So Greg buys this piece of shit car, and that's what Mike Brady told him. Caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. And then, of course, Greg turns around and he tries to do the same thing to some guy who, and, and the kid that he sells the car to ends up on American Graffiti, the movie American Graffiti with Ron Howard and directed by, what was that guy's name? He directed that one movie, American Graffiti, and then he never did anything else. George Lucas? Okay. So here's the deal. People don't especially young people. You young whippersnappers. You don't want to take the time to make up your mind anymore. People want their minds made up for them. They want to go to their favorite news site and get spoon-fed. They especially don't want to take the time to research opposing viewpoints. God forbid I should try to understand them. People know what they want, and that's what they want to be fed. Part of it has to be boiled down to laziness. I don't want to take the time to understand you or respect your opposing view because that requires me going to the, into the grayness of an issue and going into the grayness means oh I might have to take extra time I might have to agree to disagree that takes work and I think I'd rather take that time to watch Game of Thrones or Housewives of Beverly Hills or Housewives of Atlanta or Drunk History so that's the deal with this this uh, poll. Let me go through the, the ad uh, more completely. So the ad said Democratic Polling Center. It said your official straw poll response. Yours is still missing. And it says, who are you voting for in the Democratic ticket? It is divided into four sections. Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, or other. And when I clicked, when I saw it, I looked at all the comments. How can you leave out Bernie Sanders? First of all, let me tell you. This. How can you leave out Pete Buttigieg? Blah, 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 blah. And at the bottom of it says polling.dga.net. There is no dga.net, okay? It was all bullshit to get you to click on it so that some company can collect data on you and sell you more shit that you already like. So there you go. I have a little clip from Mark Zuckerberg who, like I said, I think he's kind of creepy, but um, I agree with him. In this case, there's a segment, an exclusive interview on NBC, take that for what it's worth, that's conducted by their anchor, Lester Holt. He interviews Mark Zuckerberg, and it, obviously there are more details, but I was able to grab this little tiny bit, and I kind of agree with the guy. I believe that it is important for people to be able to hear and see uh, what politicians are saying. I think that when they do that, um, that speech will be heavily scrutinized by other journalists, by other people. Zuckerberg also had this to say in a public speech at the Institute of Politics and Public Service at Georgetown University. I don't think it's right for a private company to censor politicians or the news in a democracy. I don't know if he thinks it's right or not, but I don't think it's possible. You can't vet out every single piece of information that goes out into the news stream or out into the public. Freedom of speech, unfortunately, also means freedom to lie. And it, we all have to take responsibility for what we read as to whether it's a lie or not at some point we have to take our own responsibility zuckerberg can say he doesn't think it's right i don't think he can no one can not even a communist society can there's still people who are gonna act out or speak out or protest or whatever okay let me put away my soapbox Finally, he had this to say. Part of growing up for me has just been realizing that it is more important to be understood than it is to be liked. And, and I believe it very strongly. And I, I do think that people can, can make up their own minds about, uh, about me or, or the work that we're doing. But, uh, but this is who I am. Once again, that is a story from NBC with Lester Holt. And I will have a link to that at the bottom of the description. Also, Elizabeth Warren ran her own ad saying, just to prove what you could get away with on Facebook, uh, Elizabeth Warren ran an ad saying that Mark Zuckerberg has endorsed Donald Trump for, for president, which is basically Elizabeth Warren targeted Facebook fact-checking policy with her own false ad saying that Zuckerberg endorsed Trump. Uh, there's a story about it in USA Today. I'll have a link for that down at the bottom of the page. But I'm not sure what her end game is on that because 
you have got to take your own responsibility for the things you look at and click on. Okay, we get it. You got to look at the fine print. Caveat emptor. And I, God damn it, I couldn't find a clip where Mike Brady says caveat emptor. I'm really bummed about that. Listen, I thought you promised me that you were going to let me look at the car before you bought it. Yeah. I had to move fast. A lot of other guys wanted to buy this thing, but my friend Eddie offered it to me first. It was such a great bargain, I knew you'd understand. Greg, uh, what did you pay for it? A hundred bucks. Eddie said it was a steal. Yeah, I think it was a steal. Let's see. Oh, there was something else that I wanted to, that this kind of parlays into. The the level of laziness that we've come to, it made me think of the movie Wally. That movie came out in 2008, and it had, you know, the little robots, very cute, you know, Wally running around. He's cleaning up all the garbage on Earth because that's all there was left on Earth is, is just piles and piles of trash, and the humans have left to go find uh, another inhabitable planet. And when you see the the people on the planet, uh, I'm sorry, when you get to see the people that are on this gigantic spaceship, uh, the people have become so obese and lazy, and it looks like they're, they've lost their skeletal systems. There's no bones to them. They're just these blobs of people. That movie's worth a revisit. As I said, it came out in 2008, It can be a little syrupy, but it's still a good film. It's a great film, actually, and there's not going to be a a sequel to it. Uh, You can rent it for like three bucks on Google Play or Amazon Prime or any of those places. But I did look up a little quote from the director of that film and what he was trying to say with it, because it wasn't just a, a, a movie that kids and adults can enjoy. He said, I realized the point I was trying to push with these two programmed robots from Wally. It was the desire for them to try to figure out what the point of living was. It took these really irrational acts of love to sort of discover them against how they were built. I realized that that's a perfect metaphor for real life. We fall into our habits, our routines, and our ruts, consciously or unconsciously, to avoid living. And I think that plays right into what I was just talking about uh, with, you know, following up on news stories that you read. You need to do, you need to do your own fact checking. This quote goes on. To avoid having to do the messy part of living, to avoid having relationships with other people or dealing with the person that is next to us. That's why we can all get on our cell phones and not have to deal with one another. I thought that's a perfect amplification of the whole point of the movie. I wanted to run with science in a way that would sort of logically project that. And again, that came out in 2008, and we're just diving deeper and deeper and deeper into our own personal screens and our own personal world with our own preferences all set up around us so that we don't have to deal with each other. We just want to be in the same niche. I don't know when niche niche became niche, but we want to be with all the people that we are like-minded with, and if we disagree with one little thing, then you're out. Okay. <sighs> what else did I have for you? Uh, oh, there was a story about... The story is from CNN. Again, I'll have the link at the bottom of the description. And the title is, It's only four ninety nine, but Costco rotisserie chicken comes at a huge price. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm on a budget. So if I am having to buy my lunch, usually I make it at home, but I am not above going to Costco and having a hot dog and a soda for a buck 62, I think it is. Um, it's, it's the best deal in town. I'm not saying it's the healthiest deal in town, but I'll go for it. Also, Costco has these rotisserie chickens that you can get basically for five bucks. So now Costco, in order to keep that price, as they did with their hot dogs, they started making their own hot dogs so that they could give you a cheap hot dog at the little food court. Costco is getting into the chicken ranching business so they can keep the price at $4.99. Now the ranch, this chicken ranch, not that chicken ranch, this chicken ranch is in Nebraska. Some people are for it, some people are against it, as usual. Every topic under the sun has got to be divisive to the point of protests and lawsuits. But the people that are for it, there's there's this huge chicken ranch that Costco is creating in Nebraska, very close to Nebraska and Iowa. Uh, because that's where they can get a lot of grain to feed these chickens and a lot of jobs. But again, not everybody is for it. This is from the article. An estimated 15% of chickens today are sold as whole birds. Only 15%, down from around 50% of 
of all poultry in the 1980s. Nobody buys a whole bird anymore. You go and buy your boneless, skinless chicken breast or whatever, right? Well, nobody buys a whole bird anymore. This is according to the Department of Agriculture. Instead, they are chopped into breasts, legs, thighs, chicken nuggets, and wings to feed Americans insatiable appetite for chicken at grocery stores and fast food restaurants. I'm curious, when was the last time you bought a whole bird? I'll buy one every once in a while because they're cheaper and then I'll, you have to piece it out. I don't think people want to. When I've done that, most people get grossed out. Ew, ew, ew. Like, what do you what do you think you eat when you eat chicken? I'm sure most of you are out there. Uh, not most of you. Some of you are out there. Well, I'm eating a plant-based diet. Mm, good one. When did that term come into, into vogue? A plant-based diet. Can't you just say a vegetarian? That's like the phrase price point. Has anybody run into that when they go to buy something now oh you want something at that price point what the fuck is a price point it's the price don't try to fool me okay i got off track again so costco has got this huge chicken ranch and they are cranking out these chickens also the reason uh, why they're doing it themselves is that the chickens that are coming out of other suppliers which the biggest one i believe is tyson tyson chickens is that I'm going to go to the article. Tyson chickens, they're cranking out these gigantic chickens. They're huge. And I'm sure you've seen them at the grocery stores. Like chicken breasts today are about the size of a a turkey breast 50 years ago. So Costco, in order to sell a chicken for $4.99, it can't be a gigantic chicken. That's, it would cost them too much money, but they want to keep that price point at $4.99. So they want a bird that's a lot smaller than most of the birds that these other suppliers like Tyson are providing. Let me see if I can find it. Chicken is the most popular meat in America. The average American eats about 95 pounds of chicken per year, which is more than twice the amount consumed per person in 1965. It's the most consumed, followed by beef at 57 pounds per year. Followed by, and this is what I, oh, pork at 52. And then turkey is way down at 16 pounds a year. Why don't people eat more turkey except during the holidays? That's crazy. We should eat more turkey. So make no mistake, consumers want cheap Walmart chicken is a quote from one, an executive at uh, Costco. Here's why they decided, one of the reasons why they decided to go into their own chicken making business. We were having trouble getting the size bird we wanted on a consistent basis. This is an executive from Costco. We couldn't take a seven pound bird or an eight pound bird and make it work. They're too big. They wouldn't even fit on our rotisserie line. So they made this, uh, created this ranch in Nebraska and they think they can slash costs by 35 cents per bird. And as I said earlier, they did the same thing with hot dogs. This chicken plant is going to be uh, nearly 400,000 square feet and it will empl- employ 950 workers. That may not seem like a lot to, to people living in urban areas, but it, if you go out to Nebraska, that's, that's something. Okay. Don't, don't, how dare you? It, that's something. And it can make the difference for some families in, in that area of the country. Uh, they're primarily going to be serving the West coast, servicing West coast Costco's from this uh, Nebraska farm. If the Costco plant is successful, other major food retailers will likely make a business case for bringing animal protein needs in-house. How about that? So Costco wants to reduce its reliance on these other uh, suppliers, and they're doing so by starting their own chicken ranch. Not that chicken ranch. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, I, I think I've, I've babbled enough for one episode. I mean, where else can you go and have someone segue from freedom of speech to the movie Wally to an episode of The Brady Bunch to Costco chickens and tie it all together so beautifully? Yeah. Okay, as always, thank you so much for listening to The Modern Moron, even when it's one moron. We'll have links at the bottom of the description. Please go to our Facebook. Uh, We're on Twitter, at The Modern Moron. What else? Like us? You know what? You don't have to like us.
seconds. Just listen. It's fine. Hope you have a great week. And I'm working on getting a, a guest someday. You know, maybe I'll even have a, a, a famous guest someday. It'll happen. I, I know famous people. I do. Honest. Bye.